Okay, so I have to pack everything up this morning and move accommodations, which sounds like a pretty easy deal, but when you've been here and stationed out of one spot for a few months, it you really like you really settle in and it's not just like a quick pack your bag. Like you have to pretty much move out as if it you're moving out of your house. So it's a pretty labor intensive job and I think that's what people you know, you kind of get miscued, you get to go to all these amazing places, and you do. However, I I also um, have to pretty much pack up and move my life from almost week to week, but the winter months are months to months. to watch try doing it every few weeks yeah you know, it's great that you can spend all winter long somewhere warm and in the south in the desert training every day but this is reality this is like every few weeks you're moving your life from point A to point B and you commit a whole day slugging all of your stuff all of your belongings but the the thing is like I, I came down here with only like one bag and it just accumulates. You know, you go to team camp, you accumulate like two bikes, uh, more bag, like, I don't know, hundreds of kilos worth of weight. It just never, it never ends. So I just looked at the GPS and it says, it's 90 kilometers of locked grid. But I was also wondering why my leg was starting to get tired. And I realized that I haven't drove the truck for several hours for quite a while. Like almost all, yeah, probably all winter. It's just been like short little trips. So I never noticed it. But in the truck here, I have to hover my leg on the gas pedal because I'm not quite, like I don't have a long enough leg. <laughs> the seat doesn't tip like down enough so my heel can rest on the floor. So I don't know if it's, is it just me? Does anyone else have to hold their leg out in the air? For, like a five hour drive? So I've arrived here in Prescott. I was hoping to get here before it got dark so I could unload the truck, but that didn't quite happen. But not the end of the world. I will uh, call it a day with you guys and try to get some unpacking done and then just head to bed. Or actually I'll probably foam roll for quite, quite a while because my feet and my ankles are just swollen from being in the truck for so long. It was about a five hour drive with uh, traffic in Phoenix. So thanks for hanging out today and I will pick up tomorrow morning and explain why I choose Prescott for a bit of a short altitude training camp before going into the race season. So thanks for following guys and I will see you in the morning. And good morning. I'm now in a new location and that feeling of being disoriented for the first few minutes when you first wake up, eh, it happens, it happens every time. But it's been a good start to the day. I did get in a lot later than I was planning yesterday. Um, but now that the sun is up, I can see where the heck I am. And this is by far the cutest place I think I've ever stayed. As you guys know, like training camps take up like majority of my year. And because it's just so expensive over the course of seven, eight months, a lot of places, they keep you humble. Like they're they're not near as cute as this. So it's a really good start. I'm such a morning and window and warmth kind of person. So uh, window sunshine and coffee, it's been a good day, a good start to the day. So this place actually has three bedrooms. And the fact that there's even a second bedroom is a pretty big deal. But when I saw this cute little one, all I see is that carpet being my foam rolling and, and strength little room. So 
So I already got a bonus room. But the outside is super awesome too. There's this massive wraparound deck around the whole house. And I feel bad, like normally, whenever Adam's able to stay with me, we are staying in somewhere like pretty basic, but this place is amazing and I have no one to share it with. <laughs> So when I was driving here, I thought, oh, it'd be kind of fun to talk about the pros and the cons or the good and the bad things about being a pro mountain bike racer. And then when I got really thinking about it and then making like talking points, I was like, oh, it actually looks like a really negative lifestyle. But it's not, it's not all bad. <laughs> of course it's not all bad. But I think actually uh, what people perceive as a fun lifestyle of being like on the road all year long, you're always staying in nice accommodations, chasing the sunshine. It sounds pretty glorious, but but it's it's not what it seems, trust me. So everybody is so different and everybody that I race against have a very different approach to getting to the World Cup level. And mine is different in the sense that I'm such a sensitive, oh, there's a hair. I'm so sensitive to my environment. And at home in Ontario, we don't have the best training facility. Like there's no climbing. The temperature is only good for a couple months of the year, but we're usually racing and traveling for them. Um, so yeah, I choose and I have chosen for, gosh, 11 years now to pretty much chase and invest my money and time where I can make the most out of my training days and recovery days and be somewhere where I'm happy and that is, that is so important. You have to, have to be happy. And happy doesn't mean like you're doing fun things. In fact, I'm almost never doing fun things, but happiness is for me getting and accomplishing like my, the process, like the day-to-day -day chores that go into being an Olympic athlete is what makes me happy. And this, you know, being on the road is what it takes for Emily. And not all athletes have this approach. Like a lot are able to stay home because they have a nice winter that they can do cross training. Um, some they can just do drive away training camps. But for me in Ontario, I just, I don't have the climbing and I don't have the heat and I don't have the, the, the sunshine. Like ah, I'm so sen I'm so sensitive to sunshine. Uh, so I accumulated over 55,000 miles of in the airplane. And that was 34 days worth of airport days. 34 days I spent in the airport. I'm sure it's like more if I actually um, looked at it even closer. So whereabouts, so I have to fill out, all of us do in the top 40, I believe it is for the women, you have to fill out your whereabouts. And, and so that's a pain in the butt, but it's kind of cool because you also have to do blood, your blood passport. So I have like a medical history of um, being tested, whether it's for racing or for random tests, because they can come to the door like any any time, and they do. I think in 2007, 2018, I was tested 17 times. So that's kind of a pro and a con because you're always having to fill out where you're going to be, even if it's in the airport. You still have to let them know, um, and then you always have to give your one hour testing slot. That's a pain in the butt, but the database is always good to have for future reference. Um, so the days on the road versus days home. I accumulated how many days I spent at home in 2018 and it worked out to be a total of six weeks. So I do have a house and, at, and Adam and I live in Brooklyn, Ontario and I'm such a, a hands-on person. I love um, like working in the gardens and I'm just, I love DIYs and um, I actually, that's part of the reason I can't be home because I want to you know, retile the fireplace and redo the bathrooms. Like I want to do stuff and that takes away from training and recovery. So I can't be home. Um, so again, six weeks at home, six weeks. The rest is spent on training camps or uh, racing camps or you know, things like the NICA events or um, sponsor related events. I've touched on it already. I'm such a byproduct of my environment and I have to choose my locations wisely because I know I need X amount of climbing, I need a certain amount of sunshine. I um, I used to be an extrovert, I used to be very, very social, but I've learned that I quite enjoy being alone. But speaking of being alone, I am alone a lot. So, um, and more than I think I would, more than that, that's healthy I think, that's and not by choice, but because Adam's working and being on these training camps, 
um, they do get really lonely. And so a lot of athletes suffer from depression. And um, at times I definitely go through highs and lows of feeling very lonely. So that's always something to take into account when you're a professional athlete. It's very lonely. Okay, so the percentage of salaries spent on training camps alone, I worked it out. It's roughly, it's almost 40% of my salary just goes back into training camps. So that's not like the, the flights, that's just accommodations. It's very expensive and it's nice to be able to stay home and cross train and stuff like that, but I can't. I know I have to invest all of this money and time to be on the road to be where I want, where I want to be. So positives, you get to experience so many different cultures and yeah, you do to some degree, but um, you do and you don't because you, I end up flying from basically like the airport to the, the car to then the accommodations and then you're on the bike and then you're recovering like you might go to the grocery store. So you, I don't even really go out for dinner. Um, but life hacks like airlines, oh my gosh guys, I have a decade of experience working with airlines and all of the little hacks, you know, so, like little details. You guys have probably caught on to some basic things like every time you fly with your bike and your, you know, your saddlebag has CO2, they always take it. Okay, put that in your checked luggage. They don't, they don't scan it for CO2 in your checked luggage. Lots and lots of airline and hotel um, savviness um, and experience there. I can pack a, ba a bike in a bike bag in almost under 10 minutes. It depends what bag, but the Evoke one that I'm traveling with, I can do it less than 10 minutes. So that's a bike packing hack that I have taken a long time to figure out, but I have got good at it. Um, d dealing with pers different personalities. I've always been a pretty patient person and not a non-judgmental, but working with so many different types of people teaches you another level of patience that you probably didn't know exist, or at least I didn't. Um, I always get to see and feel the places that I would like to go back to. I don't take a lot of vacation time because it's always around cycling and training and bikes, but um, I love staycations. Anytime that I get to be on a vacation, I'd rather be home. Um, but yeah, you get to, you get to experience a lot. And, and, and know where you'd like to go back to. Other things like culture related. So Italian arugula, oh, that is like the most spicy and crispy greens I have ever tasted. And so all I, like when I make a salad at home, which is like nearly every day, oh, I'd give anything to have Italian arugula. Okay, some awesome things about um, being on a pro team is pro, you get to sometimes, not always, um, sometimes see like prototype um, products coming down the lines and get get a hold of some things a little bit earlier than the markets would um, so we can test them and then be ideally racing on them a lot earlier than they do hit the market so that's always kind of fun but yeah I think I mean I could go on and on and I do have pages and pages but I think the bulk of this conversation is that it's amazing to be a pro athlete and there's so many things um, and then there's also so many like things you probably don't give much attention to, like how lonely it is and how much it costs to be a pro and live on the road. And again, this is just my my approach, my life, my take. Not every athlete is the same and a lot can stay home and do different things. Um, but this has been my approach. It's a lonely life, but it's um, you're only an athlete for, you know, well, well there's no age limit nowadays. But um, it's not forever and I definitely have some goals to accomplish. So I, yeah, I'm excited. And I think doing this vlog is going to be fun for me because a lot of the times when I'm alone, like truly alone, it's sometimes like, it's a little bit depressing. So if I can share with you what life on the road looks like, um, I think that'll kind of bring, that'll bring excitement, excitement to me. And I love like gear and tech stuff and Adam's into all of this. So I can kind of just yeah, we just have some fun with it and, and bring you guys along.